Well, I think the punchline here is that it's really very much a mixed bag. You know, we've been talking to a lot of businesses, and I've been having lots of conversations with families across the district. And some places and some people are feeling like they're very prepared to jump back into the economy and get back to where they were pre-crisis. But there are a lot of businesses where they're not seeing the same kind of foot traffic that they were before. And I've talked to a lot of families, many of them staff at the Federal Reserve, who still have large concerns about whether it's safe to go out. And as long as they have those concerns, I think we're going to see a muted recovery. What, what's your biggest fear for the economy at, at the moment? Is it that uh, continued steady reopening goes badly? Uh, or is it that there's a second wave? I, I guess what I'm asking is if there isn't a second wave uh, for the virus, are, are we going to see a rebound that's perhaps a little bit more encouraging than, than initial worst fears? Well, I actually have two concerns, to be honest. The first is really very short term in real time. And it's about whether the job losses that are being re reported are temporary job losses or permanent job losses. And I'm hopeful that the relief that's come out will make more of them temporary than permanent. And that's what a lot of workers expect. In terms of how the, the public health and this virus progresses, I am concerned about uh, flare ups that happen periodically and what that will do to the psyche of the American consumer. You know, here in Georgia, uh, there was a report just two days ago that a rural county about an hour and a half from here had a, a big outbreak of the virus and it's, it's hitting that community very hard. I have a feeling that the people who live in that, that community and near there are going to be far less eager to re-engage in the economy. And if that happens repeatedly, then I think the, the recovery is going to uh, struggle a bit. So it sounds like you're a little, little more cautious than, than those who are expecting, you know, a swift rebound or at least a, a continued progress toward positive growth starting in the third quarter. Well, you know, I am a central banker, and so being cautious is, is natural to my, my person. Uh, but I will say that there's just so much uncertainty out there that it's hard to be definitively confident about any of the particular outcomes. And so I'm trying to stay measured and really focus on what kind of information I'm hearing in real time. You know, so much of the data that's coming out is backward looking, and we really need to get real time information and find creative and and uh, rigorous ways to bring it together so we can tell that aggregate story. Uh, a lot of people uh, would suggest today that the negative rates didn't really have the desired effect in, in Europe or in, in Japan as, uh, as initially hoped. If they were embraced in the US, if they had to be for whatever reason, do you think they would be more effective because of the more developed bond market, uh, because of perhaps a, a better functioning banking system? Well, you know, that's a very notional question. I've got, to, I've got to say, I've been very public. I'm not a big fan of negative rates. I feel like we have a lot of tools that have been demonstrated to work. And I'd rather that us focus on getting those deployed and placed uh, in an appropriate time and let them work themselves out. So the whole notion of negative rates, I haven't really been thinking about that too much in terms of what that means for how the economy plays out. So what are you thinking about as far as what else the Fed could do? Because we are hearing that caution, not just from you, but, but your fellow Fed central bankers, and this idea that the Fed could do more. Yeah, I think there are a couple things. First, you know, we have shown through our facilities that there's a, an ability that we have to get capital out to families, to households, to local governments, to nonprofits that are in distress and need that support. We're going to remain open to doing that wherever we can. But a second thing that's really important, I think, is the outreach that we're doing to businesses, to families, to find out when, where relief has gotten through, understand how that's flowing through and helping businesses and families, but also where it's not. You know, we've done a number of surveys, and I talk to businesses all the time, where they're saying, well, I haven't really seen the relief get to me and my customers. And we are going to make sure that that word gets up to policymakers so they find ways to, to get relief to everyone who might be, able to, to, might be able to use it. On that note, do you regret some of the high-level uh, political and media criticism of certain companies that took PPP loans? Uh, has it meant now that we've swung in the opposite direction where perhaps some companies aren't uh, taking uh, lo loans from, from PPP or other sources because they fear a, a, a media or political backlash. I mean, we went from running out of the initial tranche unbelievably quickly to, to still not seeing the second tranche fully, uh, fully drawn down. Well, you know, whenever we do rollouts like this, there's a balance that you have to strike between doing something really fast, where you're going to have to do resets periodically, or taking your time, 
getting everything exactly right and then rolling out so you don't have those, those uh, re reverses. In this instance, I think it was much more important to be fast and, and quick with the response. So I don't have any regrets about this and the sorting out. You know, I think that's a natural thing. I do think that the more important aspect here is to let people and businesses know that there is still relief money available. There's still relief that's getting out into the system, whether it be the municipal lending facility or some of the economic impact payments. Uh, make sure that you get whatever relief is available to you uh, so that we can bridge this crisis and get to the other side with our fundamentals as intact as possible. So, so are you urging Congress to do more? Do you think the next stimulus move is going to come from Washington or, or from the Federal Reserve? Well, I, I don't know the answer to that question. What I would say is, is I feel like it's my responsibility when I see there's weakness in areas where, the, where fiscal policy can make a difference to let policymakers know that. And then it's for them to figure out exactly what they're comfortable with. I do think that it's really important that the Congress and all of us be open to the possibility that more might be needed. And if we come to that decision to do whatever we can, look, I don't want us to, to not do enough and then have regrets six months from now that if we had just done a little more, we might have been able to save a lot of really important businesses and help a lot of families avoid uh, hardship. So, so my, my predisposition, I think you've seen this in how the Fed has operated, is to do more, to be active, to be bold, to be decisive, and to really swamp this to make sure that we get as strong a recovery as possible. The head of the uh, IMF, uh, the latest high-profile person to, to su suggest banks shouldn't be paying dividends at this, uh, at this stage. W where do you stand on that? So my view is that banks should be preserving as much capital as they possibly can and using that capital to in, in the, the uh, direction of providing support. So for me, I think that banks need to think very deeply about the extent to which uh, doing dividends or paying out dividends is going to be helpful. I would hope that many of them uh, decide that it's not exactly the best thing at this time. And I think their shareholders will understand that. We're in a crisis situation. We've been very active as a Federal Reserve to encourage banks to get out in front of this, this issue work with their customers as much as possible, deploy as much capital lending as possible. And I think that uh, this dividend issue is one way that they can do more of that. Hmm. Finally, you know, the Federal Reserve in the corporate bond market, how comfortable are you with the Fed buying investment grade and high yield bonds? And do you think this is, this is more about signaling or are you going to become a, a major player like other central banks in this market? Yeah, I don't anticipate we're going to be a major player over a long period of time. Look, this is an emergency situation, and we have to do whatever it takes to make sure that we're providing relief across the board. What we saw in corporate markets, uh, corporate bond markets, was there was a, a breakdown in, in businesses' ability to get capital. And the chair has been very clear on this, and I totally agree with this point, which is our job is to make sure these markets continue to function, and we're going to do all that we can to see that that's that occurs.